Hey there, so today we're going to be looking at some simple ray casting in Unity. This example will be of a first person perspective as you can see here and can come in very useful when you need to identify a game object that is being interacted with. So as a quick demo on what I have set up in my scene here, we have so we have two cubes here, these will be my Dave cube and my Bob cube and these will be the objects that I'm going to test the interaction with. Here we have a plane and that will be for what the character will be walking on. And we have a directional light here, that just comes with the scenes, you don't need to worry about that too much. And we have an FPS controller. Now, this is actually Unity's built-in standard assets FPS controller. Much quicker, rather than having to build one from scratch. So if you want to know where that is, when you create your project, you want to bring in the standard assets and at least bring in the characters because this will help you jump ahead just to test your game just to throw a character in there that you can look through so the one I've actually used is the first person character here and it's prefab and I've used the FPS controller here you can also use the rigid body there's not much difference for the tests we're doing today so that's cool so this can come in very handy when you've got a game and you need to interact with something but you need to be looking at the object you're interacting with so to give you a couple of examples it could be a switch on the wall where you need to be looking at the switch to interact with it or it could be a character that you must be facing to continue a conversation with so to start off with we're going to need our play interaction script so let's create a new one and I'm just going to call it play interaction So it all depends on your personal preference and how you've set up your character for where you stick this script. But I'm, I tend to always stick it with the camera because I feel the camera is the object that's doing the looking around for you. And well, it just makes sense to stick it onto that. So let's go ahead and do that. So this script will be empty, but it can't hurt to stick it on there to get going. Right, so if we look at this script inside our editor here. This is our template. Now it really doesn't matter where you run this script for the testing because it all depends on your game, when you need to run this raycast, and if you need this raycast to be disabled or not, it all depends. Now to keep it tidy I recommend that you don't put your chunk of code inside the update method here. It's always best practice to keep this kind of clear because if you're debugging your game normally when you open up the script the first place you'll go to look to find a problem will be inside the update so let's break that out a bit so what should we call this we'll call this interact raycast it's really up to you what you name it now this method doesn't return anything so we're going to add a void there cool so you'll notice I will write this code a bit broken up and I feel it's be easier to understand well, as we're going through it. Um, I will give you an alternate version of the method afterwards which will be a, a streamlined version and you can use that if you prefer. But I just feel if you break up the variables a bit it gives you more access to each little component later on when you need to make small changes and, and whatnot. So let's begin. We'll start off by adding this method inside the update method so this will get run every frame semicolon now the first thing we're going to need for this ray is an actual position of the player where the ray is going to start from so we'll create a variable of type vector 3 we'll call it player position and that will be well this is going to be attached to the actual player or the actual camera so you can type transform on its own and that will go straight to the transform of the game object this script is connected to. If you need to go straight to the object for example you can also go straight to the object this way. So we'll go transform.position and this will give us the position of the game object when this function is run. Next we will need a direction from which this ray is going to be cast so we'll have another vector 3 
this will be more like a directional vector rather than a 3D point in space. So I'm going to call this forward direction and this will be transform.forward. Now the transform contains loads of different directions that you can use and it, if you're looking at the floor for example forward will be straight down because it's forward from the camera. Now there are others if you wish to cast the ray sideways or backwards if someone's chasing you for example but let's just stick with the forward one for now. So next we will actually create our ray that's going to be fired so this will be we'll call it interaction ray ray of type ray and this will be a new object it'll be a new ray object and you need to give this the position that it's going to start at and then the direction that it's going to be fired in like so now you notice how I haven't used new for the vector 3 that's because this is already an established vector 3 I don't have to define that here but this is a brand new ray object so we'll use new there okay so next we need when this ray hits an object we'll actually want a hit object so we'll have a ray cast hit object and I'm going to call this my interaction ray hit and I don't need to specify the output for this I could type equals new ray cast hit but the physics class will actually return a ray cast hit for us which is nice now you might have noticed my variable names are quite long but I feel I do go back to scripts months later and sometimes forget what they do so this helps me understand what the variable is actually doing you know is it bouncing around is it interacting with something is it a position a direction and so on okay so next I'm going to have a length of my ray so I'm specifying it as a float you can also do an integer and I'll call it my interaction ray length let's give it a default value of 5 to start off with now this isn't often done but to help with debugging the scene and if we've got our ray firing off but it it's not quite returning the correct object or it's erroring somehow or we need to just see the ray physically in the view we can go debug dot draw line and in the scene where we play test in the game this will draw a line from the from the camera in this example but that will need a starting position and an end position rather than a starting position and a direction so we have our starting position here already but we don't have our end position so let's just make that temporarily so we have a point in space and we'll call it interaction ray endpoint now this is purely for the debug.draw line it won't be for the actual ray casting so if you want to skip this bit entirely here these two lines feel free so to create this the simplest way will be to take our forward direction and to multiply it by the length of the ray that we're going to be casting so what you can do here is you can kind of use the actual length of this ray as a multiplier and you can take your direction times it by the multiplier here which will give you the position that the endpoint is going to end at so if this was to be 50, 100, a million this endpoint would end up being 50, 100, a million distance away from your ray cast position which is your player position so let's finish this off so the draw line needs start and end and I've forgotten semicolon on the end there awesome so that's set up with the basic draw line there's no ray cast in there yet but just to demonstrate that we can go into our scene here our script is attached, yep, so if I click play now good, it's all working so I'm actually going to rip my game view out so you can see the scene at the same time let's get a nice view so you can see the cameras so you can already see there's a the draw line debug there which is nice 
they really help us out sometimes. So if I go into my game view and look around, you can see there is our draw.debug line. Or debug.draw line, yeah. And I'm looking around. Look at these objects. And sometimes you're looking at an object and you realize, you know, I am looking at it, I'm colliding with it, what's going on? Well, one common thing that people miss is your the objects you're colliding with, or your ray is colliding with, need to have box colliders. Or any any collider really. Let me stick that back there. Cool. So that is everything set up apart from the actual ray cast. So let's go ahead and start that bit. So next I'm going to use the raycast method inside the physics class, which is from the Unity up here. So that will be physics.raycast. So the first thing we need to give this is the actual ray. The second, which will be coming out, will be the actual hit object there. And lastly, we'll specify the max distance. So we've got our variable for length here. Now, this will return a boolean. So I'm going to create my bool. So it'll be, call it hit found. Awesome. And then we'll have a nice and simple if statement. So it'll be if hit found, we'll do something else and do something else. So I'm going to grab the object that this ray has actually intersected with. So let's start off by having a variable of type game object. We'll call it the hit game object. And that will be so the easiest way to get this game object from the hit is our raycast hit here. It's the raycast of type but we can go straight to transform and then to the game object. So there we have it. If it's hit something from this line here, we'll go straight in and grab the object. And I'm just going to have some simple feedback. So I'll have a string which will be my hit feedback and that will be, let's just have the name of the game object that's been hit. And we'll use debug.log to shove that out in the console to see what our hit feedback is. Now if nothing's been hit, I'm going to also create a string for nothing hit feedback and I'm just going to keep that as an empty dash. So when it's actually printing out feedback, the difference between a dash and a name is quite huge so visually it's really easy to see. If I was to put, I don't know, a massive sentence there like nothing has been hit, go home and chill. <laughs> It would just it will get lost. Like the objects you're being hit will get lost in all the feedback. So and then we'll do a debug.log and we'll have our nothing hit feedback. Awesome. So that is the entire method there. I know you can we can shrink it down to about this big in a minute. You can see how it's all been put together. And now if I go into my game world here, get my console ready. No errors, that's good. And click play. So this is in the update function, so it's running every frame, and you see that nothing has been found. I'm walking around. Oh, it's found the plane. Walking around, and I haven't interacted with any of my cubes yet. So if I walk over here and I look at Dave, way. So the ray has been cast, it's hit the cube collider, it's then given me that feedback and I'm printing out the name of this object. Also if I was going over to Bob here, bam! So there is Bob coming up in my console now. And you can do this with any object you want, even the sun if you want, but that is, that is so far away I would never bother with a game world that big, unless you want to bring that a bit closer. And there's that plane. And also you have to be careful that sometimes, if I just pause this here, 
get the scene view. You want to be careful where you place your script that does the ray casting because depending on what level you stick it inside your character, it will collide with your characters. Let's have a look. Your character's collider. So you can see here it's actually starting from here, so sometimes it will collide with itself. But you can set things to be ignored or you can change where you're going to put it. So that's that. So if I'm to show you, I'll come in here. Now I'll show you the alternative function, which is a slimmed down version, which you s might see a lot in examples. Copy paste from Notepad. So here we go. So here is our alternative method, which does exactly the same as that. It's just a slim live version. You can see we've got our array. It's being cast. If it hits, do this. If not, do this. But you can see, even though it does look a little bit more messy and it's twice as big, I do prefer this way because if I want to change something inside, you know, what's being raycast or change the position here or change what's being logged, I don't have to go inside these brackets and start messing around. I can just go to that one variable, change it, and it will trickle down through the rest of the script. But personal preference, really. It's up to you how you want to do it. And that is the code. Just right there. And we'll let you do an example because he's been waiting. There you go. There's your cubes. Have fun. Whoa. It's making... Nope. Wait. Nope. Get out of here. Thanks. Just ruined my scene now. Great. Cool. Well, that was how to raycast and grab the object that your raycast has hit. Um, I hope that was helpful. And thanks for watching.